So the goal will be to score one of my favorite movie scene of all times in just seven days. But oh my god, my brain is going to explode. Like it is so much. My heart is actually racing. I, I really need help. I don't know what to do next. I was just so frustrated and I had to make it work so that I can think about something else. Hey there, PLB here, and on this channel I am documenting my whole journey learning music production from zero, but lately I've been in need of a new challenge. You see, producing music for streaming platforms is really cool, but what about producing music for movies? As an old visual effects myself, I love movies. And music has always been that one little thing that gives me the chills in those very intense epic scenes. I mean, if we remove the music in a scene, It's pretty boring. So I figured why not trying to learn film scoring in order to add a few more strings to my bow. Can anyone become the next Hans Zimmer? Do we really need music theory for that specific style of music? Will it make me a better music producer? Those are all the questions that I would like to answer through this challenge. So the goal will be to score one of my favorite movie scene of all times in just seven days. This scene. <laughs> Now, if you're wondering, orally, this is quite ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> but you know me, I like a good challenge. From the research I've done, I found a few videos on YouTube that I want to watch to get an overall idea of the process. And I have a couple articles to write and a few freebies from composer creators on how to get started with film scoring. Additionally, I'll be calling my friend Zach Heed, who is a professional composer that composed some of the music for Kung Fu Panda in order to ask him directions and tips. And he will also judge my song on day six of the challenge. Enough talking, let's get to work. All right, let's call my friend Zach. Yo. Hey, yo, how's it going? What's up? It's good, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, but I'm, uh, I'm stressed about this challenge actually. <laughs> so yeah, I know you're a pro in it, so I just wanted to get like your um, opinion, you know, like, do you have like any pointers or like direction for someone that is a complete beginner into like scoring music? So usually the trickiest, trickiest part in the beginning for people <laughs> is that like orchestra is huge. Okay. One of the ways that some people like to do it is they like to do like sketch first. So they'll think about like just work on a piano or whatever like your main mm, instrument is. Okay. And just work through the scene until the music kind of feels like it works and then mm. you go to the orchestra. And so like what you can think about with flying is yeah. like when things are airborne, usually what, what a lot of composers will do is they'll take groove away because groove is like what grounds things. It right. feels like an engine, right? So like if they're not airborne, you might have like a groove and then as soon as they take off, you pull out the groove and the, the music just kind of holds on its own, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Like I think I'm gonna look at how to train your dragon a lot, like as reference. Yeah. I think. Yep. But the key, really, honestly, is like the orchestra is really no different than a band. You could think of it like 200 players, but you could also think of it like four or five. Mm -hmm. So you've got strings, winds, brass, percussion, and then pitch percussion. Oh, thank you for that. That's gonna be super helpful because yeah. I didn't even think about winds. I only thought about strings, to be honest. There's a huge reminder, like two, two things I wanna sneak in there that'll really help. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so one, yeah, if, you, if you're doing sound, structure your music around the sound. So like, if there's a hit, then That's the sound. transition. And then the other last tip yeah. is the last that I promise. I'm yeah, done. yeah, yeah. Hitting stuff on time, on like on beats, will look and sound early to the audience. So you want to aim to hit stuff later, like three oh, like, frames. For example, if someone later. like hits something, once it touches on the video, I need to have like w one to three beats later the sound. Exactly. Sounds good. Yep. All right. <laughs> I'm really excited for you, Arlie. I think it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for all your all your tips. It's gonna be super helpful. And uh, yeah, all right, <laughs> that was a lot, but uh, let's get started. How to learn film scoring. So as a brand new person to film scoring, I first started by doing some research online. I watched a couple of YouTube videos, read a few blog articles where I found a very interesting video from Hans Zimmer explaining how he did the music for Dune. But all this theory quickly made me feel a little bit overwhelmed. I'm really gonna have to like 
think about like the chord progression, the notes I use, the key, like the chords. Yeah, because it really has to share the emotion. And uh, that's probably gonna be the hardest part, the hardest part, I think. Oh, there's one thing we need to do is to download the scene from Avatar, otherwise it's gonna be hard to score it. Now, while downloading the scene, I got really excited. Okay, I think the first thing is probably the best. Whoa! And I watched it a couple times to get an idea of where I wanted to yeah. go with the music, depending on what emotions I would feel watching it. This is what I hear for like the beginning, you know? Like just uh, when he's like struggling, like when it goes like here and go. Maybe not, I don't know. We'll see what I do with this. I think that what I have in my head for this is like. Da, 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 da. But this is a long scene, so I think once he's. Yeah, I think once he's controlling him here, I'll probably stop. I think that'll be a good challenge already. As I got a better idea of what I wanted for the scene, I still had no concrete idea as to where to start, so I decided to watch a from start to finish process from two different videos, just so I could gain a bit more knowledge about the workflow. While it did help, I also watched some references scenes from How to Train Your Dragon and Harry Potter in order to have a bit more solid idea of what instruments I should use, how do they do the transitions, how do they even introduce the music in the scene. Oh, this is gonna be tough, but it's a good reference for like the beginning of the flight of Jake. I think this is gonna be the challenge, just like to make um, a melody, like you know, like a, a musical sentence that is like longer than like eight bar that we do in EDM, right? Analyzing those scenes allowed me to pinpoint a few important things to take in my scene. For example, they do stop the percussions as soon as they start to fly. They use a flute as a top melody and wind chimes during the magical part of the flight, and it seems that cymbal rises and crashes are heavily used to highlight the transitions. So I just received a message from Zach with all the links to like the resources that he uh, recommends to me or any beginner, so let's check that out. Oh, there's another video or something? Yo, Orly, I just realized I'm terrible at marketing because I have a freebie on Notion, which if you want to share that with your audience, you can, uh, <laughs> but it's Fundamentals for Film Composers. Oh, it's yeah. a guide I made about basic scoring principles. So it covers scoring a picture in terms of timing, about how we hit things later, like we talked about. Okay, Fundamentals for Film Composers. Ooh. I took an extra 20 minutes to go over this full guide and I have to admit, Zach has a particularly good way to make you remember the fundamentals. Remember how he said to offset the music a few bits to match the audience reaction? Oh, f oh shit, Zach, come on. <laughs> Woo, I hate horror movies. But yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. If the doom would have went before, I wouldn't have seen that person in the back of the room. That is freaking scary. Okay, <laughs> you made your point. <laughs> so after being scared to death and having taken way more notes than I needed, I felt like it was enough research. So I guess at some point you just get a you just get a start, right? I'm not gonna lie. During the first session of drafting a rough idea for the scene, I had very little idea of what I was doing. For this challenge though, I've been lucky enough to partner with CineSamples, which gave me their whole musical library and it's been a lifesaver. So my afternoon just consisted of me looking around the library, finding instruments that I thought sounding good with the scene and trying to map a rough idea for both parts of the scene. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so <laughs> it's like almost 6 p.m. and I started around like, I don't know, 3.30, 4, something like this. So I've been at it for like almost two hours it is so freaking hard, but I think we have something. Think, fly! Fly? Here I don't know what to do yet in the middle, in between the two parts, and then on the release back up, More angelic stuff. Uh, I first had a first idea, but didn't really, didn't really sit well. Um, and then I think what takes time, because like it's the same. Like this was my first idea here, um, and I took basically the same uh, notes, like the same progression, and put it um, instead of chants, like which felt more angelic. 
um, I, I put more like low brass, low cellos, uh, which I think works better and I think the idea is there. But yeah, what, what takes the longest is just to find the instruments. Luckily, using Museo made it 10 times easier for me as their catalog literally have all the instruments you'll ever need. It was definitely a time consuming process, but I was pretty much just using the search bar, typing an instrument, listening to the previews and selecting the one I had in mind. What I liked the most was that the quality of their instruments was so good right off the gate that it didn't require much effort to get a decent result. Additionally, when giving feedback to my students on their productions, I often tell them that they don't use enough organic instruments and that their song sounds too robotic and electronic. If you have that kind of problems, using tools like Musio is an easy way to set your productions apart by adding real and organic instruments. Sample libraries like such often cost thousands, but Musio is CineSample's way of making it affordable to anyone by using low subscription models starting at $9.99 a month or $99 a year. They currently offer a free 30-day trial without any credit card required, so you could easily give it a go, but otherwise, you can get 25% off Musio for three months or the entire year on an annual subscription using the link in the description. Okay, we're on day two of the challenge now. I am pretty happy of what I just did on day one, but I think I need way more time to to learn more about the theory of it and what to do, you know, which instruments to, to, to use. So I think I'm gonna spend a couple hours today, this morning, working on just watching some tutorials because I need to know more what's available for me to do. So yeah, I think uh, I just need to close the gap on like the theory first. Uh, so then I can continue working on that, um, on that film, on that scene. So yeah, just gonna do that for now. So while watching all those tutorials, I paid much more attention to the actual process required. Step by step, it goes something like this. First, they do a spotting session where they watch the scene and decide where to place the music, why and how, a little bit like I did earlier on day one. Then they find the right tempo and pace, which can and often changes during the scene by mapping the tempo automation. The third step is then to start sketching your idea with your main instrument, most of the time a piano, and then assigning different instruments to each chords or top melody you came up with. And this is what they call orchestration. Now, even if it was a bit overwhelming, it's honestly so intimidating, I'm not gonna lie, like, I was super excited, but now I feel more intimidating because I feel like there's so much to do and so much to know. Um, but that's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do something decent, we'll do something decent. I learned a lot about it and got a couple more tips on music theory, which were quite surprising at times. Or maybe even drag this down another octave so we have even fatter and more spread out notes in our arrangement. What? Three times. Another reason I needed all those tutorials was to make a list of all the instruments I could see them use in order to have a bigger instrument database and knowledge. Not being able to improvise fully at the piano yet, I also found a video that showed me how to make big chords like Hans Zimmer on the piano roll. And then we have the D minor, D, F, A. That is helpful <laughs> because right now all the videos I I ended up on where they, they were doing everything on the piano, like doo -doo 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 -doo, like they were so good at piano. I'm not that good at piano, so having also a tutorial on how to do that on the piano roll is going to be a massive help. So I'm just taking notes on like a couple ideas of chord progressions uh, that has the emotion that I want for my own scene. And we'll see, you know, which one I choose, but I think that'll be the way I have to go for this one. <laughs> That being said, this was not enough to get me started on my own, so I also looked up a few more videos that would give exact chord progressions to use to achieve a particular emotion. Some of the ones I took inspiration and note of were Danger, Awe and Wonder, and magical. Okay, so <laughs> I've watched, I don't know, like five to seven videos, uh, which is really good. Uh, it does make me feel better. Like with more theory, I know a bit more what to do really from the beginning, you know, with fundamentals. 
but oh my god my brain is going to explode like it is so much my heart is actually racing right now so yeah i think i'm gonna um, call it a day today um i think that's enough theory i took like I don't know, four pages of notes here with like ideas of chord progressions that I want to use. I'll see tomorrow to put that into practice. Today I'm gonna call it like a theory day um, because yeah, my brain's gonna explode. <laughs> All right, day three, let's go. Today's gonna be trying to apply this. So I'm gonna try to find a better chord progression that have more meaning and emotions to go with the scene. Uh, Cause the scene has two different aspects, two, two different scenes almost. It's there's the fall where it has to be with a lot of tension and like very dramatic. Um, and then when he's finally controlling the dragon and he knows how to fly, it should be a bit more peaceful because he then know how to um, control the beast and just explore the new world. So yeah, I'm gonna try and do that today. Or at least that was the plan. After spending one hour and a half experimenting with chord progressions, things didn't really turn out the way I thought they would. So everything together for now sounds like this. Think, fly! fly. <laughs> But after that, I have no idea what to add more, uh, where to take it, where to go from there. I, I, I'm feeling super lost. Um, I try to come up as well with like another type of chord progression for when it goes up, but I think the transition from one emotion to another like super fast, uh, I'm feeling super intimidated and overwhelmed by it. I have no idea how to do it, so... Yeah, um, I feel quite stuck right now, to be honest. Uh, so I think tomorrow I'm gonna probably spend almost the whole day on it and try to put in way more, way more hours tomorrow because right now it's not really doing good. So yeah, that's, that's where I am right now. To make it simple, I was struggling hard. And to be honest with you, at this point, I was really starting to wonder if I could even go through with this challenge. Was it too ambitious for a first try? Maybe. So I decided to take a break, go play some tennis, and come back to it later with a fresh vision. All right, just came back from tennis. Um, I think I'm gonna message Zach because I I really need help. I don't know what to do next. And the thing is, I have two versions. I have this first version that I made the first day, that I made the first day, which has a top melody that I think I really like. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> But it has no consistency, it has no chord progression, it has nothing under that. And then today I made a great chord progression with a great sense of like danger and tension. But I can't find a top melody, I mean this top melody cannot go on it. So it's like they're great individually but they're not, they're not working together. Um, and so, yeah, I just don't know where to go from there and what to do. So, Zach, <laughs> I think I'm gonna message him. So if there is one thing you need to know about me is that when I am stuck on something, I am obsessed with it. That means I cannot think about anything else or do anything else until that thing is fixed. So this is what happened with this yesterday. Until this morning, I was just so frustrated and I had to make it work so that I can think about something else. So I just spent like, I don't know, an hour and a half this morning, almost two hours, as soon as I woke up and it sounds so much better. <laughs> I just uh, spent some time to do like the chord progression of the second part, like the wanderer uh, discovering the new world, controlling the dragon part.
And I also worked a lot with um, coming up with SFX, like effects, organic loops and sounds uh, for the fall down, because I think I realized that it's supposed to be like a tension moment and it doesn't necessarily have to have a top melody. So, and I'm finding that with all those like drums and effects and all, it's, it, it looks pretty good, <laughs> I think. And yeah, I feel good about it. I think I'm gonna put more times towards it today just because I feel so inspired, but uh, yeah, hopefully I'm getting, I'm getting somewhere. <laughs> So right before starting day five, Zach messaged me back and it couldn't have come at a better time. So basically he said that both of my ideas are very decent and valid, but I told him the problem that I have that you know is that transitioning from one to another, one key to another, one chord progression to another, it is so hard, I don't know how to do this. But once again, Zach saves me because he has a video on the topic, so I'm just gonna watch that right now. Every week, composers reach out to me to submit some music for feedback, and time and time and time again, I see the same issue coming up, and that is transitions. Composers are actually yep. really good at making ideas and building those ideas up, but when it comes yep. to switching between ideas, they really struggle. It's tough to make yep. transitions not- Check, 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 and check. That's gonna lead me into my second tip, which is stagger entrances and elongate exits. No huh. Stagger? I don't know what that means. Entrances. <laughs> Elongate. Exits. That I think that makes sense. Mark Tree. Have you ever heard of Mark Tree? Grand Casa, Timpani Roll. What is this? Never heard of that. Okay, once again, I decided that I should just go for it and learn by doing, so I jumped back into Logic, opened Musio, and tried to use the techniques I learned in that previous video to make some type of what you would call a transition. After about an hour of work, I was able to get something decent and decided to call it a day, so I'll show you the result right after during the feedback call with Zach. Yo! Yo! Hey, how's it going? What's up? <laughs> it's good, how are you doing? Ups and downs. <laughs> yeah. How, how did this go for you? Uh, so right now I'm starting day six. Um, okay. So it's been five days. It's really been a roller coaster. Like um, at the beginning, I was like super excited. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then on day two or three, I realized it's way harder than I thought. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> what was the hardest part about it like so far? The hardest part, um, the transition for sure was the hardest. Um, and I think just knowing which instruments uh, are at my disposition, you know, like mm -hmm. which instruments I can use, because there's so many that I don't even know the names of them. Yeah. There is so yeah. many. <laughs> so that's what's been tough, but uh, I, I did something. <laughs> <laughs> you got something. That's, got good. that's a good start. <laughs> So do you cool. wanna do you wanna look into it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right, cool. I have things to talk about. First of all, though, like this is already a great start. Like, I think you've got a great palette underneath. The instrumentation is really cool. And I think that the ideas that you have work. Okay. There's little things that you could probably do. Yeah, yeah this but is, the idea that's work. The, that's, <laughs> that's the hard the part. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is most definitely the hard part. Like, the, these things will be really easy to implement now that the bass is working. Cool. This is the moment where, like, everything is suspended in the air. Like there's no sense of 
knowing what's going to happen next. So this is where I'd have as little rhythm as possible, which is kind of what you did. Oh, interesting. Like, there's a little groove, but you could maybe even just strip the groove completely. You mean, like, having no percussions no percussion. at the beginning? It just when it starts? Yep. Just when, he, right when he goes over the edge. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's option one. Okay. Or you could really lean into the drums there and make it feel super tense, double down on the drums that you've got going, like, dun, 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 dun right? And that's where I would be like, how do you make drums like that? <laughs> do you have, like, contact factory library? Uh, I'm using Muzio. It's a sponsored video. Oh, then they definitely, they, oh, okay, sweet. Well, Musio's even better. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, though, they have lots of, um, if the Drums of War is included in there. Okay, yeah. Um, they have great, great libraries in there. One, two, and three. All three of those are good if they've got them. Okay. Or even Cineperk, I think, has lots of right. good drums, too. All right, so layering with the drums, heavy. Yeah. There's your, your first repeated idea here. So you, I noticed you were working in kind of like eight bar ideas mostly, right? Uh, this one, yes. When you repeat an idea, there's like two two ways you could vary this up. Uh, or, or you could do both. <laughs> Option one, when you repeat the chord progression the second time, what I like to do is just, like you got a four chord progression. Yeah. So the second time, just change the last chord. So you could do, for example... This is the first time. Maybe next time. Pulling everything up an octave and giving it to different instruments would definitely be noticeable. So. That you would hear. Yeah. Sure. And it's, it's still keeping your idea, but it's just, it's slight embellishment. So I would do that probably just to add to the tension. This part you would keep, and then this part I would change so that it goes like more up or... Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and if you good. want to add an extra level of tension, just add yeah. like another uh, another instrument or layer to this, this idea. So right now it's chordal, right? So something easy you could add would be some sort of a, like an ostinato or rhythm. That's just like, you know, maybe just outlining the chords, but doing it with like strings, you know? So if you have your strings yeah. doing that, like, on the second repeat, now suddenly there's an extra level of, like, drama that happens. That's on the second repeat. Yeah, that would be cool, because uh, I, I kind of knew it needed something. I just couldn't really pinpoint, so that gives me a direction. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Oh, shit. Definitely by this point, because now there's an extra level of drama, right? Like, he, you don't know if he's going to fall. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, so that's where I change the chords, uh, and it goes more down in the definitely, chord yeah, yeah, yeah. Lower, lower the bass, make the bass go lower, and bring up the other side. So expand out the orchestra, so it's like even larger on both sides. Lower so you mean and like higher. expand the chords so that it it's o over multiple octaves? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you're here. Go there. Nice, nice with the suspended symbol. Shut up and fly yeah. The transition. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the hard part. This that figuring out how so to do this. Hard. So here's a really easy thing you can, okay. you could do if you want. I mean, I actually think it works. Okay. Um, I would just if you if you're open to trying a tweak. Yeah. Just cut out all the melodic aspects during the transition and just use percussion to shift it, like what you did. Okay. Okay, because right I now I can tell you're trying to glue them together. Yeah, that's what I tried. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, that's what you were saying in your video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's my, it's my fault. <laughs> I, I misguided you. No, I mean, that, maybe I mean, it, it depends on the scenes, and I'm guessing here maybe, um, maybe it doesn't work for that particular scene. So yeah, cut out all the melody elements, and use percussions. Mm-hmm. And like swells or symbols suspended and all that stuff, that's, chimes that's literally and it. all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Here's the instruments I would use to just really push it forward okay. for that final tremolo strings. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's gonna shimmer it, right? Yeah. Tim roll timpani. Yep. Um, there's libraries. You don't have to manually go. Blah, blah, blah. You can, but there's libraries that will just do a roll timpani roll. Yeah, I think I have one uh, from the museo I found. Yeah. yeah. 
And then I would maybe even throw in trumpets because trumpets are going to be really piercing. Yes, actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. Trumpets for the last, uh, like, f- for the last part. Sure. Yep. Just on the top end of that last chord. So yeah. if, you're, if you're doing that chord, right there. Yeah. Yep. So, like, you would and just use it, yeah. like, for one last chord or you would, like, slowly bring it in on the last four chords? That's usually what I would do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last that's four what I would chords, do too, yeah. build up, you know. And if I was using modulation, I would really, like, kind of and really push into the last one. Cool, okay, and then you have, yeah, boom, and then just big swell with percussion, and then you're into your next section. Yeah. First of all, I really like what you did, but, so something you can do over most of this, just to add a little bit of rhythm without using rhythm, I would use like, harp, that's okay. just arpeggiating the chords. So like, I was hearing. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful. Right? So just have some sort of a like, like a little top melody and even more awe and wonder mm-hmm, and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had a really that's really cool. I would lean into that more. I I could see like a cello or something, okay. kind of pulling up. If you can have, I think, a through line, like a line that rises up through those chords, right, as it goes through, and the near the end, then I think it'll be really, really sick. Okay, I think I almost have all the notes down for you. I know this is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that'll be uh, plenty. <laughs> You're like, I'm good, I'm good, please stop. <laughs> I mean, I have this afternoon and like one more day uh, to, oh. do, to do all the um, all the notes that you were gonna give me today. So okay. I think that'll be fine. I'm not gonna give you any more then. Yeah. Actually, that's honestly enough. Like that's all. that's all you need. Like between those different things you talked about, you could just implement those in different areas. So yeah, and I think yeah. they're all they're all gonna be challenging as well because uh, it's all gonna be tough to at yeah. the moment. But <laughs> I got excited for you orally. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, seriously, I'm I'm not just saying it. Like it works. So cool. Like, That's just, awesome. That's you awesome. could just decorate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Really good job. Seriously. After about a week, I had enough time to come back to it with fresh ears and went straight to doing the last notes from the feedback session. Making my own drum loop was super fun. Not sure it's any good, but it was fun. And in order to do the arpeggio arp that Zach mentioned on the second part, I just used the arpeggiator from Logic Pro, cause to be honest with you, at this point, I was just too tired to try to do an original one. I also kept working on the transitions by removing every melodic element, keeping only the drums and risers, and finished by doing a quick and dirty mixing pass consisting of volume levels, panning, and EQ. And so, after a total of about 15 hours spent struggling, learning, trying, and trying again, this is what we got. Think, fly! Fly? did you think? I hope you had fun watching this little challenge. I personally enjoyed making it so much, even if it was super hard. To be honest, I'm quite happy with the results. Obviously, I was not expecting to make anything crazy, but I'm glad that both ideas worked and it taught me a lot at the same time. And most importantly, it really brought me the drive of wanting to make music again. I really feel like I'm going to pay more attention to the emotions and the feelings that I want to transmit through my music.
music, so just that is a win. Thanks again to Cinesimples for sending me Musio for the challenge. I honestly couldn't have done it without it, and it was super easy to use, so it definitely helped a lot. Quick reminder as well that if you want to get 25% off for three months and access over 1800 high quality instruments, you can use the link in the description, but in the meantime, keep learning and I'll see you in the next one. All right, it's a wrap.